covered in part 1 the introduction of thermodynamics and the important terms that occur in thermodynamics what all are the processes that take place in thermodynamics and in this part we are going to start the foundation of first law of thermodynamics so hello i am dr upasna I'll be introducing you to the chemical thermodynamics, what are thermodynamic functions, what is first law of thermodynamics and how it is applied to calculate various thermodynamic properties. To know more about this topic, you can refer to the book by S. Chand Publishing and the link of the ebook is given in the description box. First law of thermodynamics. In the year 1798, Benjamin was the first one who introduced, who uh, saw the relation between work and heat. Uh, later on, Joule proposed that one calorie, you are all aware that it is equal to 4.184 Joule, that is relation of heat between heat and work. So, what is first law of thermodynamics? It states that energy of the entire universe is conserved and only the energy can be converted from one, one form to another form. This is also called perpetual motion of first kind that is the energy can never be created on its own without any source. Uh, you have to have certain source where one form of energy is con getting converted into another form. Uh, in the now what is uh, the internal energy so this is the statement and now there comes one parameter called thermodynamic function which is internal energy represented by u uh, internal energy is the intrinsic property of the system and it is the total energy of the system which is equal to the summation of its translational energy, rotational energy, vibrational energy, electronic energy and bond energy or in other words whatever sort of ener whatever energies are possessed by the system the summation of that is called internal energy. Uh, this is a function of temperature and volume. So we can say that internal energy is the dependent variable and temperature and volume are the independent variables on which it depends. And if you write the complete differential of this, it is du is equal to partial differentiation of u with respect to t at constant v and dt plus partial differentiation of u with respect to v at constant t dv. So, this is how you write the complete differential of uh, a state function. So, in case we are taking uh, the system gaseous system in a container which is uh, there this is a frictionless piston and what happens is suppose we are providing heat to the system as I told you uh, heat given to the system will be positive as uh, with the sign convention. This heat will not be con uh, will not be used entirely as work. Some amount of heat will be taken by the system to raise its internal energy. So let us say the initial internal energy of the system is U1, and on giving heat energy Q, the system uh, raises its volume and it or it changes its internal energy to U2. So, for a state function, we write, so if I take u2 minus u1, that is the difference between the initial and the final state as u is my state function, I am only considering this, uh, not the path by which the state has been achieved, it is q plus w. So, delta u is equal to q plus w is the mathematical form of first law of thermodynamics. Uh, and w is my mechanical work which is PV work. Okay? So, this work is categorized into three types when the external pressure is zero that is the expansion is free expansion when your internal pressure is greater than external pressure 
this means that the uh, system will expand or work of expansion will take place work of expansion and if you have p internal lesser than p external then compression work will take place so these are the three types now what is the reversible work and irreversible work reversible work as i said it's a very small change so the uh, value between p internal and p external will very minutely be different from one another and the expansion or compression work will take place but they, it can be reversed whereas in the rever irreversible work there will be a finite changes in the pressure so if i write work work as minus you know that work is represented by force into displacement now uh, work this can be also written as force into whatever volume changes when pressure is represented in terms of area uh, force is represented in terms of pressure and area so uh, this dv okay uh, is very important because we have to see whether the changes are uh, finite changes or infinitesimal changes so uh, based on that you have expressions now uh, what is enthalpy why do we need another function one is internal energy why do we need enthalpy internal energy is a function of temperature and volume but for most of the uh, practical purposes we keep pressure of the system constant and we basically uh, the experiments are performed under atmospheric pressure condition so the there is one another quantity which is called enthalpy it is a heat content of the system and it is a function of heat it is a function of temperature and pressure it is a function of temperature and pressure and it is represented by enthalpy uh, internal energy plus pressure volume work pv work so it is the work also that is taken into enthalpy so internal energy plus product of pressure and volume uh, if i write the complete differential of this it will be dh equal to du plus pdv plus vdp vdp and at constant pressure since i said that all the uh, parameters the experimental condition is a constant pressure so what will happen dp will become equal to zero so i will have dh equal to du plus pdv and this will be zero now according to first law of thermodynamics du can be represented as dq minus pdv so and if i substitute it in the uh, up, above expression it will be this so on cancelling these two i will have dh at constant pressure becomes dq that is heat content of the system at constant pressure the units of enthalpy is same as uh, internal energy which is joules or uh, joules only enthalpy of reaction is summation of the enthalpies of the product minus summation of enthalpies of reactants now what is heat capacity another parameter represented by c heat capacity is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of the system by 1 degree celsius okay it is again the intrinsic property of the substance so if i uh, want to know the mass as i told you uh, heat capacity depends on the amount of the substance so it is uh, extensive property but intrinsic characteristic property of the system water has different heat capacity in comparison to the iron metal right so specific heat capacity is the heat required by a substance to raise its temperature by 1 degree celsius 1 gram of a substance 1 gram of a substance and molar heat capacity is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 mole of the substance by 1 degree celsius so uh, 
why it is important to study heat capacities uh, because heat capacity at constant volume and heat capacity at constant pressure is also related to internal energy and enthalpy uh, there is a derivation so dh is equal to dq at constant pressure and du is equal to dq at constant volume so these are the things that we know now heat capacity is the amount of heat required so heat is directly proportional to change in temperature on removing the proportionality it becomes c into dt so dq is equal to c into dt and your uh, at constant pressure and constant volume it will become dh only so dh equal to cp dt du equal to cv dt uh, this is the derivation for a relation between cp and cv if we take ideal gas so uh, these are the steps which i have shown you can uh, refer to these steps it's very easy derivation i have only taken the complete differential and then uh, written the this part will be my cvdt this part remains as it is on applying the thermodynamic equation of state to this expression we get this particular thermodynamic equation of state which is a relation of du with respect to volume at constant temperature we get the relation cp equal to cv plus dv by dt at constant pressure into t dp by dt at constant volume so how this expression becomes this is a very interesting thing uh, as i am saying it is an ideal gas we all know ideal gas equation it is equal to pv equal to nrt okay and in pv equal to nrt i want to have which expression expression of volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure so i will keep uh, i will differentiate this expression with respect to temperature keeping pressure constant and similarly for this i will differentiate this with respect to temperature keeping volume constant once you do this you will get this expression so cp minus cv equal to nr is the relation of the heat capacities for an ideal gas system so students this is the end of the topic 1 in this lecture we have learned about the thermodynamics the concept its various terms involved what are the various processes what are state functions how the state functions can be differentiated with the path functions then we moved on to the building up of first law of thermodynamics how the internal energy heat and work are related the internal energy enthalpy and heat capacities as the thermodynamic functions can be derived for uh, various processes and at the last we learnt about the relationship between heat capacities at constant volume and heat capacity at constant pressure for ideal gas system to know more about this topic you can refer to the book by s chand publishing and the link of the ebook is given in the description box if you found this topic interesting please like share and subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for future updates thank the copyright holder